there, wise women. Emily here from Wise Woman Witchery, and we are continuing our women run small business series this month, November. And today I'm interviewing my totally awesome friend, Andrea Savar, and I have known each other since we were like 11. So <laughs> a really long <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> And she actually is an extremely creative person and always has been. And so I, I'm excited to do this interview with her and share kind of all of her talents with all of you. So hi, Andrea. Hi, um, so good to see you as always. <laughs> I know, it's good to see you too. So um, uh, you have your fingers in a lot of different pots, but they're all yes. kind of under this umbrella of your shop. So can you talk a little bit about your shop? Sure. So our store is The Curious Nest and I run it. It's me and my husband, Laurent. So my portion of the business is primarily my jewelry, which is all handmade. And then I curate local art, um, handmade, especially by other women companies, primarily. Mm -hmm. And then my husband's portion of the store is he imports French antiques. So he's from France and brings all of those back. And we've just sort of melded the two together. Very cool. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's also important to note that although you curate other people's art, you also yes. are an artist. Yes. So it's all my art is in here. I don't have much in the way of my visual art at the moment. It uh -huh. hopefully will have a bit more later in the new year. But I have mostly, primarily my art in the jewelry sense, and then also in my books and my potions. So, those. <laughs> so, your shop is in Edmonds, Washington. Yes, correct. Do you, do you also have an online venue? We have several. So, we have the Curious Nest website, which is um, a great place to look. It's thecuriousnest.com. It has links to all of our other online stores. So okay. Etsy and eBay for the antiques and then Etsy for my, um, my jewelry, although it's woefully understocked at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize. Um, Facebook is probably the easiest place to see what's new uh, and coming in on a regular basis into the store. So I feel like I update that the most and also Instagram. Okay. And, I and that's like the business. Yes. I like all of your things. So I, I mean, I see all your stuff come up in my feed, but I'm wondering yes. where does your jewelry show up? Where do you post that the most? I feel like I post that on my personal page the most and people are totally welcome to follow that page. Um, it's just my name, Andrea Savar. And then I also have a curious collection. Oh yeah. Which, yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's a fun one. That one I do about every two months. I do a large collection of vintage jewelry from kind of my stash and it can be everything from you know Victorian jewelry to stones that you can use in your own jewelry or I can make something for you um, odds and ends really interesting trinkets so mm -hmm. things that don't usually make it all the way into the shop so I kind of save it up for that one so that's a curious collection and it's a group page on Facebook okay Yes. And, and I will just, I'm going to overshare for a minute about you. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> since I've known Andrea so long, what I will tell y'all is that she, she's like a raven and she finds all the sparkly, <laughs> beautiful things and she collects them. So when she talks about having these sales on her page, it is like, it's like Christmas. It's so cool. It's all the pretty amazing, fun. <laughs> yeah. And like sweet, like unusual things that you wouldn't normally find. Um, it's, it's like treasures basically. It's, I like to think so. I, yeah, yeah I'm a magpie in a big, big way. <laughs> totally a magpie. That's a great analogy. <laughs> and I will, Raven is a compliment too. I love okay. Raven. So, <laughs> no, perfect analogy. Perfect. Yes. And, <laughs> and because I've known you so long, I remember back in the day, you know, you've always had like, like shelves and boxes and all of these things through full of like different trinkets and things that you can create. So I noticed yes. you're wearing this necklace right now. I'm guessing you yeah. made this one. Yeah, this is one of mine. So this one is um, a moonstone and then it has diamonds set all around it. Oh, wow. And then there's a little tiny diamond. I think I put a moon on this one. Yeah, a little tiny diamond moon. And then I just did simple stone, you know, linked 
moonstones and sterling. But um, I should say too that, you know, as you know, I grew up in the gem business with my parents and the antique business with them. So from a very, very early age, I had access to things that probably most people didn't have readily, you know, (laughs) around them. Um, and traveled to kind of weird places with my folks <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to find, you know, raw stones or the kind of like Indiana Jones of the family version. <laughs> <laughs> with no snakes, right? No, well, you know, <laughs> things happen. There <laughs> probably were snakes at one point. <laughs> Or giant bugs or, you know, yeah, things. (laughs) Yes. So since we're a family that likes the strange and unusual, it definitely carried over. (laughs) You inherited that. Yes. Yes, for sure. And also just was able to collect. Yes. Yeah. Well, collect and also learn. Like, I mean, you have an eye for things. You can identify stones. I mean, I've, I've, brought things to you and you're like oh yeah that's that and I'm like what it is (laughs) (laughs) and I think and since my grandfather was a gemologist that kind of came from him too because if we were stuck on something you know what in the world is this he would gleefully get out all of his equipment and start you know organizing and analyzing until it was identified so (laughs) figuring it all out yeah exactly in his magpie den which was very much a little office with, you know, rocks and stones and all kinds of sparkly things. So, yes. <laughs> very cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm wondering if you have other, do you have any of your other like necklace creations or earring creations that you could share with us? Yes, I pulled a few out that I thought kind of had a different sort of array of what I do. I've been making jewelry for so long. I, you know, it's been since maybe I was 10, I guess, Mm -hmm. 10, 11, maybe even earlier, but selling jewelry since I was 16 in a very professional way. And so it's, it's really changed over the years, but I did, you know, I did pull out one of the old ones that I still do every once in a while, but it's one of the woven pieces. I don't know if you can see that. Oh yes. I love these pieces. So these ones are all, this one in particular is leaves and they're all made with emeralds and um, chrysophrase and pearls and primarily precious materials. Mm -hmm. And so this was a style I still do on occasion and have, I did a lot of when I was younger because my eyes were better. (laughs) (laughs) Now, you know, they're a little trickier to do, but that's a style I used to do often, and I even made crowns uh-huh. uh, for special events for people, um, all kinds of very elaborate pieces that would go even into costuming, um, just kind of across the board. And this is kind of of that same idea, except in this piece, I used an antique centerpiece. So this is an antique. Is that focusing at all? Yeah, it's focusing. Okay. It's an antique enamel butterfly and same thing woven on filigree and then all different gemstones. So that's kind of what I started doing a little later was incorporating vintage or antique pieces. Um, This one, for example, is a fairy wing. Oh, yeah. Oh, it does say fairy wing. It does say fairy wing. It's a relic, so there's no... (laughs) Fairies were harmed. It's a shed fairy wing. <laughs> and it is inside of an, a vintage French uh, uh, photo holder. Uh-huh. So it's kind of a combination. So that was one of the things that I started doing, um, especially when I moved to Europe, where I lived for about eight years with my husband. As I over there got to be a magpie and collect at all the markets, all the little tiny, wonderful trinkets and treasures that, you know, appeared. And then that kind of led into these, which I still do very regularly, but these are my little kind of amulet necklaces. So they have a lot of French metals, um, 
lots of Madonnas, lots of saints um, that I kind of connect to, um, not necessarily in a religious way, but in a symbolic way. Mm -hmm. Although I have a lot of people who do connect to it on just lots of different levels. So I like to support that wherever they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. And if it's in a very literal way or if it's in a very like symbol of the mother kind of a way, then that's kind of how I feel about it. So I do a lot of those though, because they're just fascinating pieces that have survived at least a hundred years and they were loved and preyed upon and you can see it where the people rub them and there's something special about them. So I like those. And then I do simple stones. That's probably what I'm doing the most of these days. Um, like this one is druzy and then the little star is made of diamonds and the chain is moonstone. And I've been, especially this time of year, I, I just feel drawn to working with just stones and just keeping it very kind of streamlined. Except for this week. I don't know why. <laughs> I just started kind of making these little woven ones that are, I don't know if you can see those. Oh, I can. I think, did you post these on Facebook today? I did. And on Instagram. So okay. this is the small one, the little small version. And then I have the longer versions. It, there's a couple different stones, but they're yeah. like, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm big. I like big earrings. These are like knitting to me. They are so meditative to do. I, there's something about weaving that little wire around that is just blissful. And I hope that I hope that feeling kind of just goes through with them to the next person because they really are so wonderful to make. So I, I love them. I can't stop making them. <laughs> I, you're going to get them to like see them in every single color of stone. So these ones are lapis. I don't know if those ones are showing up. Yeah. Right. The lapis is so blue. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Are they tiny one. lapis too or are those glass? They are. They're lapis. They're micro faceted lapis. So they're actually all faceted, all the, faceted all the way around. They're, they're really shiny. It's hard to tell in, in here, but they, they really are. <laughs> and then this one has moon phase. Oh, I you know, I love that. <laughs> yes. And this one I did with gray moonstone and the tiny, tiny beads and then um, rutilated tourmaline. So tourmalated quartz. So quartz with black tourmaline that goes through. Okay. Um, and black tourmaline, of course, has a lot of kind of amazing properties. Mm -hmm. So I do factor all of that into my work as well. I like to have meaning behind every piece. So it's... Mm -hmm. So that, that's part of it too. <laughs> and then totally different. I think you have one of these for me. The butterfly wings. Yes, I have earrings. Yes. That and these are resin. They're not butter, real butterfly wings. They're just a replica, but they're all set in resin. And then I put little dangles in front of them and they're just really light on the ears and easy and kind of fun to wear. So those ones I make a lot too in all different colors. And that's what I kind of had laid out. And then I have vintage, you know, like I grabbed some of these. They're like old sterling Victorian bangles. Mm -hmm. Then I have all these collections of all these old bangles. Um, Do you have any of your dominoes nearby? Yeah, should I go grab it? Well, I I'm in the store, so I have everything. Well, okay, you have everything. Well, I just, I love the dominoes that you do because they, yeah. they're like this little piece of history that's like kind of, not pop culture that's not the right anyway oh they, they kind of are though oh, let me grab it i'll be right back <laughs> okay so yeah andrea has this amazing way of finding all the things and then putting them together in this beautiful beautiful way and if i had had the forethought what i would have done um well, i did have the forethought i just didn't make it back to my house before i came here but what i mm -hmm. wanted to do was to bring the jewelry the piece the big pieces i have like so andrea made my wedding jewelry which is yes. so beautiful and spectacular and I tr it's such a treasure to me um, oh, that was really special <laughs> it, it that made me so, so happy <laughs> but I also um, purchased that other one from you uh, yeah I don't know what you would call her but she's she's the summer the summer goddess yeah so it's like a, a art nouveau yes uh, woman 
Andrea just wove all these gems through and it's so beautiful and it's one of my most favorite pieces. And I actually think I'm wearing it in some of my videos for Wise Woman Witchery. Um, she had some amazing stones in her too. It was like rubies and yellow sapphires and a very rare uh, yellow stone called um, yellow, I think it was the chrysoberyl, but yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of interesting elements in that one. Yeah, and it, it was for you, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I saw that in your store and yeah. then I dreamt about it yes. for like, okay, I, ha I have to get this. Yeah, there's, yeah, <laughs> this is happening now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was my just sidebar. And maybe what I'll do is when I post this video, yeah, uh, whoever's watching this, take a look down in the comments and maybe I'll remember to post a couple of pictures down there as well. So. I, I, that would be so cool. Oh, so here's the domino, one of the dominoes. And these are actually made by an artist in California named, named Dorothy Supri. So she does the domino work. So she oh. finds, yes, so they're um, altered dominoes. And she takes a vintage domino, oops, sorry, like so, and then puts a wonderful vintage image on it. And I've just fallen in love with her pieces. And then I create the jewelry with it. Mm -hmm. So this one, I put quartz and moons and stars and um, moonstone and then uh, halite for the chain. But I'll have all of her dominoes are unique. So when you get one of the dominoes, there's only one, which yes. is kind of wonderful. And I do feel like I've been the past few years as um, I have shifted some of my art um, or some of my jewelry making maybe from I still do a lot of the vintage pieces, but I like having contemporary pieces that are made by working artists now, like components that are part of my work. So most of my components, if I didn't make them, are made by other artists. So I'm supporting other artists in their work too. I love which, it. Yeah. And I always try to make sure and um, let people know <laughs> when it is an artist element so they, yeah. can, they can support they know that they're supporting multiple artists when they buy a piece. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hold each other up. I know, right? Yeah. There's some amazing people working out there right now. It's so true. It's a good time to do this. So yeah. <laughs> so in addition to your jewelry, I know that you do other things and you had mentioned your books. Can you talk a yes. little bit about your book series? Well, so I have a series of three books at the moment, hopefully more to come. Um, the first one is The Curious Ways of the Winship. So that's this one, book one. And um, their paranormal mystery, I guess would be maybe the, or magical realism, I'm not sure. Both. All of it, yeah. <laughs> all the things. Kind of, all the things. <laughs> somewhat autobiographical <laughs> uh, for those who know me do not have to know me to read these but <laughs> there's a fair amount of experience in there <laughs> that is rather firsthand but I've really woven it into fiction to make it more accessible more fun um but also incorporating a lot of personal experiences and then family traditions that kind of, it was a way to memorialize them in some ways, I think, and to pass them along. Um, and also just with being an enjoyable read, hopefully for people, I, that's kind of the goal, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. So there's three and they all, the first two take place in Port Townsend, Washington, which is my hometown. And the third takes place in France, where I used to live in the same region, in the French Alps. And all of them definitely have a mystery tradition to them. There's a mystery that, a family mystery that will weave through all of the books, all seven, as they hopefully are completed. Seven? Um, yes, they are. I know. They're, they're all outline they've been in the works for many years now but I have a three-year-old so you know <laughs> so pause because <laughs> I do need to sleep occasionally <laughs> but it's it's coming back so that time is starting to open up a little bit more um, now that she's a little bit older 
Nice. But uh, yes, so there will be more Winship books to come. Um, they've kind of gathered their own little momentum and following, which has been really brilliant and really encouraging. And I've met so many amazing people just through the books. So it's been it's been fun. And those are all available on Amazon or in our store. A few local bookstores carry them, but it is kind of easiest through Amazon. <laughs> right. I can sign them for you, though, if you come in the shop and I'm here. So there is that. <laughs> you also have a coloring book. Is that available on Amazon? Oh, my gosh. Yes. Coloring book is also available in the shop and online. And that has actually been above everything my bestseller. Coloring, yeah. I'm telling you, it's the coloring. Thing. Coloring is a thing, and I have it right here. Let me see. Oh, uh, look at you! <laughs> I I have one too. I, do you? Yeah. Do you, do you want me to grab it? Oh, I have it. Boom! <laughs> Andrea's coloring book. That's so awesome. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, there's like amazing. All these like super fun, magical. All what I love is how I mean I don't know if this translates in the camera yeah. but they're so detailed that you can just really zone out and meditate as you color these and I found myself doing that as I was drawing them and then I was doing like test pages where I would go in and color and it, there would be this was before child um there would be hours that would just kind of I would just feel so relaxed and mm -hmm completely forget about everything. It was pretty great. Also for travel, if you're on a plane or you're, yeah, it's just really nice to have something to do that's not just staring at a screen. So right. yeah, so that's the, and there will be a second one eventually. It, I actually started it. So I have maybe half of the drawings done and that is mermaids this time. This particular one was very forest, but the next one will be mermaids. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, now I'm forgetting things. What else are you creating? Potions. Oh, right. The potions. Potions. So I am also extremely low on potions right now, but I will be potioning next week, hopefully. Oh, okay. Yes. And this is kind of a family. Uh, I, it's an, it takes a bunch of us to really complete the one potion that I do that sells out every spring. The lilac one? The lilac potion. And I have one precious bottle left to show. Um, and these kind of are woven into my books. So there's the history of the, in a fictional way, the history of the lilac potion. Uh -huh. But my, it really does go back to my grandmother who planted from seed over... I think it was in the 40s, but I, I don't even know how many there were, but there were hundreds, hundreds of lilacs, and they grew into these incredible hedges that bordered their four-acre property. Oh so gosh. I know, it was all three different colors of French lilac, that white, dark purple, and then the really pretty lilac-y lavender mm -hmm. color. And that was always a big part of Victorian culture, too, so even earlier, um, about... Uh, dispelling negative energy they would plant them on graves for remembrance but also to keep uh, any restless souls rooted uh -huh. so it was um linked to basically an anti-vampire <laughs> but for real i mean this was definitely believed in so instead of garlic lilacs were used but they're not as readily available throughout the year so people switched to garlic <clears throat> So every spring, as a family, we do the lilac potion. So my mom, my husband, friends will come help. Um, my daughter, it's her first year doing lilac potion with us. So our little three-year-old and a couple of her little buddies came and <laughs> picked off all the tiny little lilac flowers. And we distilled all of them and create this special potion. So, it's yeah. Not the <laughs> it's yeah, and it's potent. It has its own special magic. And then I do a love potion. Mm -hmm. um, I also, that one is, I'm going to do a new batch next week. So I'll do the ones that are coming that aren't 
uh, seasonally related. I can do them all year round because of different uh, essences that will last. Mm -hmm. um, is Love Potion. Um, what is the other one I'm doing? Oh yeah, Mystic Mist, which is really nice for house clearing. Oh. Yeah, it's- I haven't it's a, that one. It's a newer, I mean, it's an older one, but it's, I've just brought it back. Okay. And, kind of reformulated it. Uh, we used to joke about that one a few years back. Uh, I had named it, I was trying to get it right, and I had named it Wise Woodsman, but it smelled horrible. It smelled like Sasquatch. Like I, <laughs> oh my God, it was the worst. I could not get the plants to do what I wanted them to do. <laughs> they were not happy. So terrible, horrible. Pacific Northwest girl here at Sasquatch. <laughs> so you've improved yeah. upon the recipe? Yes, ma'am. It's <laughs> now completely usable, wonderful, does its job. So that one is, I'm going to do a new batch of that next week too. And then I also do, um, oh, Old Ghosts, which is one of my favorites. So Old Ghosts is supposed to conjure that sort of warmth of happy childhood or lifetime memories. Mm -hmm. um, I use the vanilla that I got in Bora Bora. Oh. Um, yeah, so I brought it back from Bora Bora. Um, bay leaf, tobacco leaves that are all organic, of course, so nothing with any type of chemical. Um, I forgot what else I put in there. It's a wonderful, warm, spicy, kind of scent and it just feels cozy. So that one is a favorite to make. And then a new one I'm working on is called Tea with Angels. Uh -huh. And that one's uh, really a remembrance of my grandmother who had communion with angels. She saw angels everywhere. She always had the tradition of having cookies ready and tea ready in case an angel knocked on her door. So. Um, that one will have cardamom and Earl Grey and all of these things that just smell like having tea with angels. So that's coming. <laughs> love it. I love it. <laughs> and probably some stones incorporated in that one, like a selenite that is supposed to attract angels um, or celestial beings. So okay. that'll be kind of woven into that one somehow. I'm not going to put it in it. I think I might wrap it on the bottle. Uh -huh. Like put the stone right there. Yeah. So, voila. <laughs> I'm curious, Andrea, are these like your potions? Can you ship those to people if they wanted to order them? Yes, because they're, there's no alcohol in them. They're all um, water-based. Usually I use a rose water base or a lavender water or some type of a flower base that I create. They're no problem to ship it. Okay. So it's okay. easy. Yeah. Okay. I've got that down. <laughs> I'm, well, I know you do actually from experience. Um, <laughs> so people can find you online. I, I just want to make sure that I, and they can find you online. They can order the things that you have available. Do you do special orders for people? Of course. And one of any special order, I mean, within reason, you know, I will definitely do. One thing I do a lot for people locally, and I've done this also for people elsewhere, is if you have a family treasure mm -hmm. that you love, but it's not something that you wear or for whatever reason it needs to be reworked, like it was a brooch, but you would love it to be a necklace. Um, I do that all the time. I love not recycling, but maybe altering pieces so they're wearable and people they don't just sit in a box and they don't, cause I kind of think they all have their own little personalities and their own little spirits. And um, it's just a shame to see them sitting in a box. So especially a family heirloom. Yeah. So that's something I love to do after, after the holidays. <laughs> so I was going to ask, I mean, obviously the holidays are coming up and um, people yeah. are going to get to see this interview sometime in November. So are you doing special orders for the holidays or is it just too slammed? Yeah. Um, I'm still a little open to do it as we get closer to the holiday to like December, things get very busy. Um, 
if you can't, if you are in Washington, like the best thing is to come in the shop if you can, but uh, for special, special orders, sorry, did that cut out? Yeah, but now you're back. <laughs> um, for special orders, I would say the sooner the better. Okay. <laughs> And I can always like turn, if you want to see a little bit of the shop since we're in here today, I can just turn without making anybody feel dizzy, but there's, we're all sparkly and pretty. It's all it it is. Darkness. Can you see it? Yes. Yay. And then that's one side. We'll go to the <laughs> other. There's this whole other place in here that's filled yeah. with antiques and beautiful things. So yeah, that's. Yeah. That's shop girl land. <laughs> <laughs> Where you spend most of your time when you're not mommaing. Exactly. Yeah. Basically, it is shop girl and mom. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Important professions, both of them. Very, indeed. <laughs> awesome. Well, Andrea, thank you so yes. much for taking the time to talk. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. All your things. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. Yay. <laughs> Spend time with Emily. Yay. Yay! I know I miss you too. Well, yeah, and technology can bring us together. It sure can. <laughs> yeah. So, wise woman, make sure that you check out Andrea's treasures on um, is it thecuriousnest.com? Yeah, thecuriousnest.com. You can also go to I have a personal web page that has just my art, and that's andreasavar.com. Okay. And that has all the links, the Facebook, and all of that. Great. And then if you're on Facebook, um, you know, you can definitely check her out there. Totally. Uh, both on your personal page, it sounds like, and a yep. curious collection. Yes. And a curi the curious nest. Yep. <laughs> they get all the things. You've got all the things. You've got them all. <laughs> um, Andrea, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. Have a great night. <laughs> thank you.